Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Welcome to Both Sides Now, featuring the unconventional duo, Dr. Shirley and medium Kelly White. Two perspectives, one world. This is Both Sides Now. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Both Sides Now. I'm Dr. Shirley. And I'm medium Kelly White. And we have John, our engineer, here today. Hello, hello. He's always here today. Birthday, John. Yes, it's his birthday. So sweet of you to come in. (laughs) I know. I love starting my day with you. Oh, that's sweet. Well, thank you so much. And today we have a very special show because we are talking about a very special topic, which we both are very familiar with, aren't we? Oh, yes. You betcha. (laughs) We have Dr. Ronald D. Blatt. He's the medical director and chief surgeon of the Manhattan Center for Vaginal Surgery and the Private Rx Intimate line of women's intimate skin care. So we are going to learn about that. So welcome with welcome, welcome to our show, Dr. Black. Thank you very much. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much. All the way from New York. Yes. I'm actually talking to you from Connecticut, but that's fine. I actually, office okay, in New York. from Connecticut. Okay. Well, so my Connecticut is, in New York. is beautiful. It is. It's great. So let's start with, you know, I was really curious as to how you became so interested in not just women's health, but really in the menopause, you know, during the menopause time? Um, well, this is part of gynecologic training. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're, you're trained in menopause, and just as you go along, your patient's age, you get more involved. Um, yeah. you know, part of the, the reason I got into the, the skincare line, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, is uh, my office was on 86th Street in Park Avenue at the time, and I had to have women... Uh, a lot of menopausal aged women come in, and this is you know prime Upper East Side and a pretty wealthy area. And the women would come in, and they'd be beautifully dressed, beautiful makeup, beautiful hair, hair their clothes are great. And when I go to do my gynecologic exam, it occurred to me that their external genitalia was dry and flaky and kind of saggy, and it's the one area they never thought about. So at the time, I said, well, one day I'm going to develop a line of products, um, starting with with a, like an external vaginal moisturizer, mm-hmm. um, and eventually. Uh, we did that and extended the line as well. So it's uh, menopause is just an, a natural part of gynecology. Well, let's talk about menopause. What's the definition of menopause? Um, menopause is actually defined as the cessation of menses. Uh, you read, if you look in the literature, different people define it differently. Some people define it as the date of the last period. Other people, 12 months after the date of the last period. But pretty much it's the cessation of menses. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, so that's that. What is perimenopause then? Well, perimenopause is the time around the menses. So it depends, once again, different organizations define it differently. Um, the most commonly used is a four to eight year time span surrounding the menopause. So maybe four years before and four years after. So even after the actual cessation of menses, the hormonal states will still fluctuate, and that's considered perimenopause. So are you saying that at some point the hormones stop fluctuating? Yes, yes, actually. Um, well, so it, it varies per woman. So it really, really yeah. is. Well, that would be nice because it's so funny how the definition, you know, must have defined, and no insult to you, Dr. Blatt, but it must have been defined by, I'm going to say, men or young women who hadn't gone through it yet because if it's just defined as the end the, the uh, end of your menses, it is so much more than that. Oh, yeah. It is, you know, Absolutely. between the hot flashes and the yeah. not being able to sleep. I mean, I used to be able to drink a 16-ounce you know, cup of coffee or a double espresso and go straight to sleep. Now it takes me well over an hour to try and get to sleep. And I go and I use meditations. I use guided imagery. Mm-hmm. I do anything oh, that I can. Absolutely. Um, well, just my, well, my main surgical assistant in my office is my age. She's 60 years old. So the average age of menopause is 51. She's still having hot flashes. And in the OR, she'll say, uh, can you turn up the air conditioning? I'm having hot flashes. Oh, yeah. So go, you know, okay, no problem. So the so average it's absolutely age is, can last for years. The average age yeah. is about 51 when it starts? or uh, Average age of 51 is the last period. Oh. And, of course, that varies dramatically with that. Well, with it's funny you would say that. When I was 51, I'll never forget this, Shirley. I was actually at a, 
at a show. I was going to see the Craig Ferguson show, and I was waiting in line <laughs> at CBS Studios. And they keep studios at about 60 degrees, 58, 59, 60 degrees. I mean, it was freezing, and it was summertime. It was freezing. And I was with my girlfriend, and we're wa waiting in line to see this show. And we're waiting and waiting. And all of a sudden, as I'm waiting in line, I felt that there was a blowtorch <laughs> under my feet. And I I actually thought I'd stepped on a blowtorch while I was waiting in this line for the show. That is so And I looked funny. around and I felt, I thought, I better get off of this blowtorch because it's, <laughs> Cause it's uh, hot. It's the hottest thing that I could ever, I can't even describe it anything <laughs> other than a blowtorch. And it went straight up, slowly, slowly, like inching its way. And by the time it got up to my, it actually got up to my hair follicles, honest oh, to God. Yeah. And my, I said, oh my God, something's happening. <laughs> and my girlfriend looked at me and she said, oh, darling, that's okay. You're having a hot flash. <laughs> I, nobody can prepare you for that. No. And, and it's really variable. I mean, you, you go from one extreme to the other. There are some women who had, yeah, my period stopped, that's it. No hot flashes, no other symptoms. And then you have people to the absolute extreme for 10 years, they can't stand it anymore. So it's really variable. I have to say, to, for me, it's like you're being seared from the inside out. You know how sometimes they sear a steak? Yeah. What well, feels like from the inside out. And yeah. I, you know, I had a hysterectomy, so I kind of hit it like a stone wall. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And it so, was. So, oh, they took your ovaries out at the same time? No, actually, they. Um, they took my uterus out first and left the ovaries. I had endometriosis. And okay. then um, I think three years later, the endometriosis continued and got really, really bad. And it was so painful. Mm -hmm. So, um, and when that happened, it was, I mean, you, you really is, you know, I had yeah, yeah. gone to, there's a place called um, uh, The Groundlings here that does kind of sketch comedy. Like um, they, Will Ferrell was a student of there before mm -hmm. he went to SNL. And they did this sketch where it was a group of women's at like a group, you know, a group meeting. And, you know, of course, how sketch comedy is. The leader is very young and doesn't get it. And the people in the group, all of a sudden, they start sprouting water, you know, <laughs> and their makeup starts running and stuff. And she's just like, just think differently. You can get through this. And I didn't understand it at the time. And now I completely get it. Yeah. And it was a yeah. minor exaggeration, yeah. maybe. Oh, please. Yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. So you deal, I mean, I'm sure that you, you work with uh, your patients dealing with those symptoms of menopause as well, right? Right, of course. What are some of the, um, I don't know, maybe tips in general that you can share with our listeners? You know, well, you know, the, the, the treatment for this, uh, you can divide it into, let's say, medical and non-medical. Mm -hmm. So, you know, non-medical, the things, uh, they say, okay, obviously, he's asleep in cool rooms. Um, with a fan on, avoid caffeine. Some people say avoid alcohol, avoid tobacco, any, any hot food, spicy food, anything that might stimulate a hot flash. Once again, this is really individual. For some women, you know, it, it is, and some women it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, the, the standard medical treatment, of course, is you know hormone replacement therapy, um, which we used to just uh, prescribe universally, and now is prescribed much less and for a shorter period of time, but it's definitely used for women who uh, have severe hot flashes and symptoms. They need to do it. Mm -hmm. There is a huge controversy with um, with estrogen, correct? Uh, absolutely. Can you say uh, a little bit about that? Uh, well, yeah, I'll go back in time a little bit to, to kind of show you where how we got here, and I'll yeah. tell you in an anecdote. Uh, during my training, and I graduated from residency in 1986, um, hormone replacement therapy was standard. It was not only record, it was it was the gold standard, and if, you know if you didn't use it, you were almost foolish. Every, every doctor was prescribing it wow. um, for for symptoms or no symptoms, even if, because it was thought to uh, actually reduce your risk of heart disease, have no effect on breast cancer, and make your life much uh, much more palatable. And so for years I used this, and I think about this. I'm going to tell you a great anecdote. So back around that time, so I'm thinking it must be around 1990, 1991. A patient came in had symptoms. I said, okay, hormone replacement therapy, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, about a week later, I got a phone call from her general practitioner. And I remember he had an accent, probably an Eastern European accent. Mm. And he calls me up and starts screaming at me for putting his patient on those poisonous hormones. Mm. And he's going on and on about these poisonous hormones. And I'm rolling my eyes. And finally, when I got a word in edgewise, I said, you know, get up to date, read Spiroff, the, the, the gurus who did all the research and say, this, read this book, read book, you know, where are you coming from? You got to read this stuff. Well, it turns out years later, he was right and I was wrong. You know, it's like that, that uh, the whole medical, um, whole medicine has changed their opinion. That it still has a place for hormone replacement, but um, 
not routinely in the slightest, and you should use it as lowest possible dose in the shortest amount of time, mm-hmm. and usually just for really for hot flashes or symptoms that are really uncontrolled any other way. So it's kind of from full circle where um, people don't prescribe it routinely, mm-hmm. and the reason is there is a slight increased risk of breast cancer. Um, there's uh, increased risk of strokes and blood clots, and so uh, it's uh, you should use it sparingly these days. So then it's okay to not have the estrogen or the level of estrogen that you used to have before menopause then? Is that... Uh, well, I mean... I mean, not okay in the sense where you Menopause is you know, a, natural, a natural state where your estrogen levels decline. Yeah. Um, you, you have the symptoms, but replacing it um, is not as safe as we thought it was. I see. I see. Yeah. So... You know, what percentage of women um, do you say have the have the mood swings, and what and what does that look like? What is your experience in the, in your patients? Oh, it's, it's hard to predict percent. I would probably say roughly half to two thirds, um, and you know, it, it varies from just mild to uh, so they really need something they can't sleep. It's really irritable. They get. Uh, Real bitchy with their partners or their husbands, and it causes you know, marital problems. Um, yeah, I've seen that. And yeah. uh, and you know, and I, in my household, the same thing. You know, and my my wife had early menopause, and and uh, she was getting unbearable. And you know, I love my wife a lot. And then and eventually, I had to tell her, and and she agreed. She knew I wasn't kidding, and she got uh, on some low dose uh, estrogen and some other medications so we can talk about it. And, because uh, the person she turned it, turned into wasn't the woman I married, and she even recognized it herself. Wow. Yeah. And so, well, I think that's an important thing to to recognize for men that um, it's not the person that you married. And I think there's different tools that probably we can all share from our different perspectives on how to help someone dealing with someone whose mood changes. I mean, my moods used to swing a lot right before my period, you know, before the menses, and and now with menopause, they haven't. You know, mm-hmm. it hasn't, it no. hasn't been a huge. So it's actually gotten better. In some so, well, I've done a lot of, you know, um, a lot of work on regulating my nervous system and noticing when I get, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm getting upset. And so I think that's helped quite a bit, but what would you recommend kind of coming from the medical model for men and, and even going through it yourself? What, what did you do to, to help yourself go through it and to help your spouse? Well, I mean, um, you mean to have how how I dealt with my wife's mood changes? Yeah, so exactly. How did you deal with it uh, with yourself? How did you deal with it? Maybe with her? I mean, you just said that you um, that you talked well, to her about it, and so she got on some medication yeah. to help. Uh, I'm a, a very patient kind of guy, and she knows that. So, uh, so uh, you seem that like that. that helps. Uh, yeah, it was like you know. So I'd like put up with it for a long time, and she, it's actually um, she knows me very well. So, so finally. I guess one day I said, you're really starting to piss me off. Mm. And those few words, because I never said shit, it was like red flags all over. She says, wow, if uh-huh. Ron's saying this, I know he says there's a problem. And so she, uh, you know, I'm not her doctor. I don't want to be her doctor. <laughs> and she went to her doctor and um, you know, she got on some medications and it definitely calmed her down, kind of put her back into the person who I knew and, and loved. And, uh, and she recognized that she was coming like that. And interestingly, on the other side, we have... Um, some very good friends who, um, and the, the woman is in the same men range and in the same mental status my wife was. Mm. And except that she kind of refuses, how to put it though, refuses to recognize it mm. as much as she should. And so yeah. we recognize when we see her and my wife especially, who is kind of good friends with her and sometimes just can't stand being with her because she's become like a different person. And her husband's also a very kind of mellow guy. And so... Um, He's just kind of putting up with it, and, and mm. we've told him, says she needs more meds. You know, and I don't say that lightly. I don't like. To, I'm, right. I'm not a, a, a lot of medication pusher at all. Yeah, I'm very much against that. But sometimes they need it, and she's uh, alienating her friends. I don't know how her husband uh, stands it. We thought he might leave her because he's he. Sometimes he can't stand it. So uh, it's it's how so it I dealt with it. Gamut, you know, I finally it just, sounds like. Uh, I'm sorry. It runs the gamut. It sounds oh, like. Oh yeah, and then you, know, you just have to kind of. Encourage the woman has to kind of almost realize that it's an issue. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. Some women, like my friend's wife, doesn't really see it, 
Mm-hmm. So she almost doesn't believe it. The rest of us see it. So yeah. um, you kind of have to recognize it in yourself, and then uh, you can take care of it. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, Shirley, but in, when I have a, a client, I really want to know what their symptoms are about menopause, if they're in it, if they know about it, if they will even talk about it. Because it's mm-hmm. not a su- – I think it's more talked about now. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And for me, from a spiritual perspective, it's all about – one part of our life ending and another beginning. It's about bringing wisdom in. And for me, when I was younger, it was, you know, guy, every guy, 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 you know, I had a lot, there's a lot of hormones going on. And now I, it's so much more peaceful for me, Dr. Blad. It's brought a lot of peace. It's, it's brought a it's, lot of wisdom and peace and calmness. And I find that my life is more about me now than it was, you know, being controlled by, oh, I got to beat this guy and that guy. And, yeah. you know, I just feel yeah. it feels better to me now. Actually, That's, calmer. It's a calmer state. It, uh, it's a very, well, like I say, it's very individualized. Yeah. You know, and uh, absolutely. See, everybody, it affects different people differently. And uh, some, I say, calm, some calm down, some don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a wonderful perspective. I mean, to yeah. see it, you know, I think you have to certainly grieve the ending yes. of your former life, but also see it as a new beginning of something, Absolutely. you know, different, but that can be just as enjoyable. Like you're saying, you're enjoying more. And also another thing that can happen during this period of time for, for women, they can really get in touch with their kundalini energy rising again. You know, it rises the first time when you're going to have your, you know, your first sexual experiences and mm-hmm. that energy comes rushing in. And now it comes rushing in in a different form. It feels mm. more alive, more calm, more something that I, you know, that I can um, enjoy. It's, yeah. it's a whole different so for, ball game there. And for some women, it's uh, liberating yeah. sexually because they don't have to worry about getting pregnant. Oh, absolutely. All of a sudden, you know, fine, it's like, I don't have to worry about it every month. I can have... Sex and not even think about it and, uh, right. and just enjoy myself. So that that's an a not an issue, but a real, a real reality as well. Yeah, it takes a stress uh, stressor off, and I think from you know validating emotions. There's so much power to validating emotions that I don't think everyone is really aware of. To just be able to say, "Wow, that must be hard," or "You seem really angry," and that's it, and not saying anything else, and waiting, and you will literally see the person melting into that, wow, I'm being seen by someone else. There is nothing like feeling felt or feeling seen mm-hmm. by someone else. And that can go so far. Um, I think that, you know, that's a great way of helping someone through through their feelings. Yeah, and I think absolutely. maybe, um, you know, your, your friend's uh, wife, you know, th- we, we seem to feel like we're weak if we admit to something. And actually it takes so much courage to admit to Things like this. And it can bring mm. couples really close together. Oh, yeah. It can actually, that vulnerability mm-hmm. can actually cause couples to feel more intimate as opposed to, you know, split Absolutely. them apart. But Absolutely. so many people believe that, that if I acknowledge my weaknesses, quote unquote, you know, that's going to drive my husband away. No, it's the exact opposite. Exactly. If you if both realize there's a problem and work on it together and, and actually solve the problem, then your marriage gets better. Yeah. Um, you, know, yeah. you know, I didn't. I wasn't angry at my wife for say to her because I, I realized what was going on. You know, I'm a doctor, so and, and I said our, our friend's uh, wife is in denial, and my wife wasn't. She understood. Yes, this is you know, it wasn't me. She knew that it wasn't the person she was, and she was uh, when she kind of accepted that fact. She, she was happy to take the medication to get back to who she was. Yeah. She's a real sweet uh, person. Yeah, I wonder if it had to do with your approach, how you approached her when you when you talked to her about it. I mean, that could make a difference. Sometimes yeah. men might wait too long, and so then when they approach it, there's like this edge in their voice, or maybe more of an accusatory tone. And if I think Absolutely. if you approach it with curiosity, then um, yeah, I mean, I didn't scream at her negative things and call her names and all this stuff, right. and you're acting like a. Bitch or anything like that. I, you know, I'm sure some guys would do that. What's the matter with you, Jason? You know, what's, um, why are you acting this way? Right. I kind of knew why she was acting this way. So I'm just kind of like, um, I would basically kind of say, well, I'll hang in there, see if she gets better. And then, well, I had to say those few little words. She knows me well enough that, oh, if Ron's saying that, there's a problem. And she <laughs> recognized that. And, and I, I was thinking of a, probably a really bad joke. If all else fails, maybe you can get the cream and yeah. say, let me massage you, honey. And then you <laughs> massage her with the estrogen cream. <laughs> Abs- absolutely. Yeah. Sur- surreptitious therapy. Right, right. Out of curiosity, do men go into menopause? You know, you, you see all the stuff written in the, the lay media and all this. Uh, you know, they always say it's just, just the male menopause and then they go out and buy their sports cars and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. 
I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't done research on it for myself. I would say, you know, no, but um, probably more of a psychological thing than a hormonal thing. Um, uh, I didn't, we never, we mar didn't marry young. I didn't uh, 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 get married too early. You know, a lot of people, I think, in my opinion, get married too early. The divorce rate is over 50% because people get married way, way too early. We, you know, I got married when I was, I was 39 and my wife was 29. Oh, mm -hmm. And so, um, I told my wife she, she doesn't have to worry about me fooling around. I got you know uh, all that out of me before we got married, and uh, we've been married 22 uh, years this this June, and uh, wow. and uh, happily married, and, uh, and we get along great. So uh, I don't for myself, no. I mean, you know, I, yeah. had, I got my sports cars yeah. and everything else. You know, my is, toys ready. Is that to say then that men don't go through a hormonal shift as they get older, or it's not enough to produce? Uh, you know, changes like it, like it is for women. Not, not like women. Not, not, not like the women. large shifts that uh, you know, estrogen, progesterone, and the whole menstrual cycle. You know, yeah. basically stops. So it's it's uh, it's a whole different thing. And I would say you know, men's hormonal status does shift slightly, but nothing like women's. Mm -hmm. So we're the lucky ones. Yay. How lovely for us. I'm wondering yeah. about, hey, I, I, I'm wondering I, about diet for women and, and and when they're going through menopause. Does that affect or should they be focusing on certain foods to help through the process? Or? Um, uh, well, you know, the, the literature says you know, stay away from certain, I say, spicy foods and things too, that mm -hmm. wouldn't trigger a hot flash for some women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> besides that, um, you can get into the whole thing about um, uh, Treatment of it, and, and uh, well, let's say it's non-medical treatment, and then you get into the, uh, the homeopathic and things like that, which, um, which is soy and phytoestrogens and like black cohosh and stuff like that. Um, What's your opinion on those? Well, you know, the medical community more or less frowns on that. Said there's no absolute uh, studies that show they work worthwhile. Um, certainly, millions of people take it. My opinion is it's really individual. Um, I've had patients who. Uh, Said oh, I tried all that stuff and it doesn't work. And I go, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work. And other people swear by it. Right. And so right. it's um, I will not say it doesn't work. And it could be psychological as well, which is not you know the placebo effect. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. So if, if it helps you, great. You know, as long as everything in moderation. Don't go crazy because you know, there's still possibly some risks involved in anything, including homeopathic medications. Yeah. So everything in moderation. If it helps you, great. You know, you can try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I that's a great attitude to have because yeah. it's. It's not about, you know, denying anything that isn't proven because sometimes things do work. You know, yeah. I take a, a homeopathic progesterone and my hot flashes have really ceased. I mean, they went down to maybe 10 percent. And I stopped okay. taking it because I'm one to I don't want to have to do something if I don't have to. Mm. And boy, they came right back. Mm. So so I do. Mm. And, you know, it has helped. It has helped me. Yep. Yeah. If it's, it's, once again, it's an individual thing. If it helps you, great, you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about your products, because what I like about it is you take care of the outside, too. And that's <laughs> part of that's Is that a majority of your practice or, you know, would you say just a part of your practice? Uh, just a, a part of the practice. I mean, um, you know, once again, I developed a skin care line. Um, called Intimate Skin Care. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. We have it here. You were mm -hmm. so kind to send it to us. And let's let's uh, let's start talking about it. Which one do you want to? Talk about first. Well, you know, the, whatever the, um, the internal vaginal moisturizer you may have. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a product. You know, all the, the products are as natural as can be mm -hmm. uh, using botanicals, amino acids. Um, you know, I want you to understand that I'm a clinician, not a research biochemist. So uh, it's not like I went to the lab, pulled the bottles off the shelf, right. put it together and said, this is it. I'm, I'm a genius. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not that guy. But we did meet with a biochemist and, mm -hmm. I said, or, and I met with kind of my team at the time and went to them and I said, all right, we want to develop a skincare line for intimate skincare. I want it to be as natural as possible. Obviously, no hormones in it, uh, no parabens or anything uh, as much as we can. And the goal was to uh, moisturize really estrogen depleted skin, mm -hmm. which is which is part of the external genitalia. We wanted to uh, do anti aging, so scavenge free radicals. We wanted to, to moisturize and in increase firmness and tone. So anything that will improve uh, collagen and elastin to to make the skin tighter and firmer, which mm -hmm. is what it always was. And so um, 
and this this was the first time I've done anything like this. So I'm, I'm a you know clinician, a doctor. So we went back and forth for a year, basically with them. They they would say, okay, doc, I understand what you want, and they'd go and then they send us samples, and let's say a, a few weeks, and our team would actually, you know, minimally test them out or putting it on our hands and see how it smelled, how it felt, and and if we didn't like it, and we'd send it back and say no, no, and back and forth um, on all the products, and that took about a year to get everything. We said, okay, this is good, and then you have to do. Clinical testing, lab testting—it's uh, it's an it's an incredible education for me because I never thought about all this to get yeah. it to market, um, and then let alone the packaging and everything else you have to do, which is also back and forth and back and forth. Wow! And um, finally got to market, and uh, it's first we did it online, mm-hmm. and you can get it at privaterx.com, and um, we had a uh, our vice president in charge of sales actually is out in LA. He's a good guy. He's been in the business for twenty years. And so we're in about 2,200 CVS stores and, and wow. the buy low chain and the Win dixie chain, and it's uh, wow. slowly but surely getting in there. That's and with very good feedback. You know, it's, uh, um, uh, I can also tell you an anecdotal story, which is um, yeah. uh, we're, we're my family voters, and uh, anywhere on the West Coast, I mean, you must have heard of Montauk, which is at the very eastern end of Long Island. They call it. It's the last stop before Europe. You know, you keep going. <laughs> and so it's a big boating community out there. And... Uh, you meet friends. So we were out there, and by chance, we met a couple. And um, he, he was in his mid sixties, and I guess she was in her late fifties, and they were boyfriend and girlfriend. And uh, I was telling him about my, you know, I asked what do you do. He ever just is very social. And I told him about this, and she said, "Oh, well, I'm having problems." So the next time, which was like in like a June of last year, I brought her out a, a bunch of samples of the the internal vaginal moisturizer, uh-huh. and then. Um, that was like in June. I didn't see them again until August because we came back to there in August. And she goes, should I see her on the dock? She goes, oh, man, I feel great. Well, oh, that's nice. I'm glad you're telling me. <laughs> I didn't think of it all about it. It was, nice. it was just like it's been a nice summer. She goes, your products were great. You know, like we can have sex now. And I, and I looked at him and he goes, yeah, it, uh, it really works, you know. And uh, so the, their sexual activity was vastly improved. Um, buy this and, and so you know you get it's nice to hear that it's a lot of times when you sell the product yeah. you, you know somebody out in wisconsin and and you never hear back hopefully they'll order it again right but when you hear but, people it's and so uh it, it, they really work and uh which makes me feel good yeah, oh, yeah absolutely that's so interesting and is there anything else out here i mean out there like this because i've never heard of me this well, there are a lot. I mean, this is like an internal moisture. There, there are some like replens and other things on the market, but there, this is when we sat down with, the, with those research biochemists. Said, "Listen, we want it to be not just another me too drug or, um, or something that you. I want it to be a little bit different, a medical bent to it, something that actually does something better than everything else on the market." Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can when you go to these labs. Once again, this is a uh, an education for me. When you go to different labs. And you tell them what you want. They say, oh, great, we have this cream here. We'll put your label on it, and you can sell it right away. Right. I'm going, no, 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 I don't want that. We want to really sit down and develop something that's going to work different than other things and really work better. And so uh, that's that's how these products came into being. And, uh, well, you know, it's funny because I can completely see that because when I was researching, you know, your products and your website and all that, I could tell that you're really passionate about this and you really want something that's going to help. And I had no idea that there was a need for an internal moisturizer because when you think of it, you would think like your mouth as you get older doesn't dry up inside. It's, right. There's always moistness. So oh. I'm curious about that piece of it. That no, that's, that's um, you're lucky because that's, that's uh, very common. I'd say 50 to 60 percent of menopausal women um, have problems with vaginal dryness and vaginal irritation and to sometimes just the point of sitting is very uncomfortable and intercourse is, goes from painful to impossible and it affects very many relationships as well uh, that uh, the, the man is still wants to have sex with his wife or his partner yeah. and she, it's it's very painful and she, a lot of times she'll just put them off for whatever reason and it affects their relationships and sometimes it, it ends relationships so um so but the but the external lub- lubricant wouldn't work or is not enough is that what you're it's saying it's not enough that's that's really designed just for uh, spontaneity for intercourse it's not long acting it's just for the time of intercourse and that works well as, as well um, long-lasting moisturizer is the internal moisturizer, and you use it uh, every night. For, for, it lasts for three days, mm-hmm. and that keeps the vagina healthy and moisturized. Um, so, mm-hmm. so, you know, maybe 40% of women don't have this at all, and obviously it may be you because, you know, but a lot of women, it's, it goes from mild to very severe, and this is something that helps, um, and, and once again, we've got good results, and uh, yeah. 
Yeah, that is so interesting because, because like I said, just kind of in general, I never thought that the inside, you know, I was comparing it like to oh. our mouth, would would get dry. Yeah. That you would think, you know, yeah. so that's wonderful. Wow. Yeah, that, that was a more, I mean, that's a more common type of product, and you see a lot of different things on the shelves. Of course, ours is the best, but um, the one that is kind of more unusual is the external vaginal moisturizer, um, which that, is the one was once again was was the. Uh, Impetus for developing the whole line, and this is for uh, the delicate skins on uh, skin of the outside of the vagina, the vulvar area, mm -hmm. um, which most people don't take care of. And so, once again, we developed uh, the external vaginal moisturizer for that area, and that's, uh, as far as we know, the only real product on the market for that location. And, huh. and it's uh, yeah. a lot of um, cosmetic or moisturizers used on the face or other areas can be irritating to the vulvar area. And so, uh, the whole design of this product so it can be used without irritation and to once again to moisturize, to firm up, um, to make the area comfortable and attractive. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. I mean, you know, we don't think a lot about that, but but plastic surgery is, you know, I, I say if it if it doesn't affect completely your self-esteem, then who cares? If, if there's an ability, there's a way to adjust something that you don't like, it doesn't matter. And we don't think about kind of our private parts, you know, in that same way. And it takes someone like you to realize or to have women, maybe your patients, tell you how unhappy they are with or how embarrassed they are maybe to be naked in front of their spouses, their husbands, or even, you know, a new date. Um, absolutely. It's, it's, it's how they look and how they feel. Yeah. And so, like, a lot of times um, even uh, the guy won't notice, so I won't care, but the woman's very uncomfortable just with, with the dryness and irritation and the pain of intercourse. It's, it's a very serious issue, which is... Um, I think overlooked and, and under discussed in our society. Yeah, and, uh, I say you take true. fifty to sixty percent of menopausal women have these symptoms. We have yeah. such an issue in this culture with sex. Nobody yeah. wants to talk about it. And you know, I grew up in that culture too. Like at home, we never talked about it. So, so I've had to kind of make myself just be more comfortable with it because it's such an it's a natural, you know, it's a natural urge. Yeah, yeah it's part of life. And That's you're right, exactly. we don't talk about it. It's, uh, you know, being a gynecologist, you know, we talk about it every day. So when you have patients coming in and to go, oh, I'm so embarrassed to talk about it or a problem, and go, you're among friends. You can't tell us anything we haven't heard before. We've heard it all and more. So, you know, don't be embarrassed. We've heard it all. And and, and um, I don't think I've been shocked in a long time. From, really? You know, it's, you hear all sorts of wild stuff, yeah. That's so interesting because every time I think I've heard it all, someone will come in and surprise me. you got to become a gynecologist. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So we're also looking at these products because you have everything for the whole vagina package. So you have the cooling pads for uh, when you wax or um, when you wax or shave. shave. We came up on um, products oh, wow. uh, to improve. A lot of women have razor bumps, ingrown hairs, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the cooling and soothing package is the pads which you use after your shave or wax, and this uh, removes the, the dead skin as well as killing some of the surface bacteria, so it prevents infection. Um, and the soothing serum um, softens the skin, so the hairs as they start to grow through don't get caught in and caught and curl up within the skin, which is your you know, your razor bumps and burns. That actually allows us the the hair to grow through the skin, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, also good success with this and a lot of happy patients. So uh, we're we're very pleased with the line. It's 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 done well. That's fantastic. Well. As I think I could speak for all women, thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, how Great products. <laughs> how wonderful products. for you to dedicate your, you know, your time to figure something out that can be so helpful and so, you know, life-changing. I mean, and, and also not just for the women, but for the men. Right. Yeah, well, you have, you have to listen to your patients. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing how many times, um, I mean, this, this, this relates, uh, once again, I do some cosmetic general surgery. And a lot of these women have complaints and complaints for years. And by the time they get to us, and we go, you're not alone. You know, you hear this every day. And so I've been telling my gynecologist for years. And they, they said, you're fine. Leave it alone. You're normal. And uh, mm -hmm. these are real issues that people don't listen to their patients. You know, listen to what they're saying. Well, yeah. tell us about these surgeries. Um, you know, I can wait. Well, the, the, the main surgeries we do are what's called vaginoplasty and labiaplasty. The two most common. Vaginoplasty, the vaginal tightening operation. Labiaplasty is a, or is a reduction in the size of the labia minora. Then we can also do a reduction in the size of the labia majora, um, which are the bigger lips on the outside. But the vast majority of our cases are vaginoplasty and labiaplasty. And so, um, for let's say vaginoplasty, vaginal tightening, well, this, this, this is an issue, once again, which was ignored 
totally. I was never taught about it. And so uh, a lot of these patients that we've had, uh, the vast majority of our patients have had children, one, two, three, four, six kids, seven kids. And as, um, as they well know, when a baby comes through the vaginal canal, everything gets stretched out. It then shrinks back down, but never to the point it was before. And the more kids, the worse it gets. And so over time, when, when this happens, um, women lose the feeling. They just don't have the friction. Um, and sometimes the men complain, sometimes they don't. But the women often notice that they just don't feel the way they were before. That. And, uh, and they can climax as well. And, uh, and a lot of women want to go to their doctor and they say, oh, I kind of feel loose. And no, no regular gynecologist is trained that this is an issue. Mm-hmm. And actually, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has come out against these practices. And you know, when I, when I read this stuff, I rolled my eyes. These guys must not be living in the real world because I don't, I don't drag these patients in. They come to see me and say, I've been having these problems for years. Mm-hmm. My doctor will say, oh, it's, it's fine. I examine you. Leave it alone. And so they come to us and, you know, and they say, okay, we can, we can we examine them and say, yes, you're loose for sure. And if you want to be tighter, we can do it. And it's a vaginal tightening operation to bring us them back as close as we can get to what they were before they had kids and uh and they're happier and the partner is happier and, and you know, it can affect their their relationship as well very much so mm-hmm. um and sometimes this is done um kind of we're talking in the menopausal range we'll have patients in that age or slightly younger who are, will have this operation even because they're back in the dating scene so maybe they were married to their husband and everything was fine, but you know they're starting to date again, and they don't want to have this issue. They don't want to have their new partner think, "Boy, she's had three or four kids, and she feels loose." And you know, um, even if the words aren't said, that they're not sexually satisfied. They want to be, you know, nice and tight like uh, they were when they're younger, and uh, it's a real issue. And they'll come in, and and uh, we'll take care of them. And it, part of it is truly physical, and as far as friction, you know, and part of it is psychological, and that they have self-esteem. They'll, they feel better. They feel like they're going to the dating scene feeling better about themselves and, and, and it makes a difference. It's really important. To yeah. So, so why do you think that some of the doctors are against this? Uh, one, you know, it's, it's elective surgery. They haven't been trained. They go on, you know, there, there's been no great studies showing benefit. Um, and I suppose maybe that's true, but you can just do individual. I mean, we're not doing anything really radical. We're just making the vaginal tissue, the vaginal canal tighter, let's mm-hmm. say, just for that. Or, or for labiaplasty, it's, it's the, the labia is smaller. And so um, it's, it's a, doctors are very conservative. So, you know, if you weren't trained this way, it's not an issue. And so once again, listen to your patients. Um, I, I tell this to my patients, and, it, and it's true, because uh, we started to do these procedures about 10 years ago. I've been in practice 30 years. Mm. So the first 20 years of my practice, I would see patients coming in, and I'd see, for example, and I'd see patients having you know, gaping vaginas after having a bunch of kids or very big labia. And I would never say a word to them. So I said, if I say a word to them, I uh, think that these sort of, they're going to think I'm a pervert. I'm not going anywhere near there. And yeah. the patient's lying on the table thinking, I'd love to tell my doctor this, but I'm embarrassed to tell him this. So now that it's above board and, you know, we have websites so people come in and say, I've had this problem for years and I'm, you know, either I'm afraid to tell them or I've mm-hmm. told my doctors and they say, no, it's fine. You know, they've never been, they've never been trained to do this. This party line is, Patients fine, leave it alone. But the patients aren't happy. So they're real issues. So uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I'm I'm curious. I wonder what they're basing the criteria on, if whether it's helping or not, because many people don't take self esteem into consideration. Yes. Um, as as a criteria to you know to sure. decide whether something is helpful or not. Um, that's that's certainly possible, and they don't use that as a criteria. Um, I I read. Um, when the, the American College came out against it, they were saying there's no studies that, and this can wind up causing pain and painful intercourse and all this, which is a possibility if it's done incorrectly. I mean, we've done this for 10 years now, we have a pretty good track record, and so, um, yeah, I suppose if you do it incorrectly, you can cause problems. And so, that, I mean, that's a, that's a serious issue. You've got to make sure you know what you're doing. Sure. Um, well, you know, if, if you've done it successfully, we have for 10 years, and, you know, we certainly um, want feedback from our patients just so you know that you're doing everything right. Mm-hmm. If it's done correctly, then uh, it's, these are serious issues that, once again, you're not trained to do it. You're, you're trained strictly, you know, strictly science about cancer, this, which is absolutely fine. But these are serious issues that affect women and their lifestyle, and, and uh, you should take care of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, how do you, I'm, I'm curious here, and you're going to go, oh, it's, it's your left brain. But how, 
how do you practice? Like when you first started doing these, what, what do you practice on in order to make sure that you're not going to do it incorrectly and maybe cause pain? Okay. Um, well, the vaginal tightening operation actually is learned by all doctors in residency, at least when I went through. Um, it was actually part of the vaginal hysterectomy training where you do a hysterectomy through the vagina. And as part of that, you do what's called an AP repair, anterior posterior repair. And the anterior part is basically you tighten up the bladder, and the posterior part is you tighten the vaginal tissues and the muscles there. And But it was never taught as an elective type of procedure to help women. It's just part of the surgery. You do, you do this, you do a, a, a vaginal hysterectomy, the AP repair. Mm -hmm. And so the P repair, the posterior repair, is just a vaginal tightening operation. So it was basically took a surgery that I had learned in residency and you just basically... You know, call it something different. This is it's a vaginoplasty for vaginal tightening. So that was that was something I learned in residency. The labiaplasty, um, when I first started to do it, um, I did a kind of simplistic operation, which um, I'll call an amputation. For patients who had really big labia, you just kind of trimmed them down mm -hmm. and and sewed the edge. And after doing some of these, and the patients didn't complain of pain. I just I wasn't happy the way it looked. It just didn't look right. So I did research, and there was only one book on this anywhere. Hmm. And so, and in that one book on cos and cosmetic procedures in the pelvic area, there was only there was one chapter on labiaplasty. And I said, okay, this is a good way to, to do it. So it's called a wedge resection. And it started there, and actually we modified that after over time. Me and my team said, okay, we took that basically and modified it a little bit to make it even better and make it cosmetically more appealing and healing better. Hmm. Um, and so once we did that, then uh, they look great. And um, if you look on our website you'll see some before and after pictures and i've got hundreds more we haven't found the website but it's a uh, so <laughs> unfortunately in that way it's kind of uh, nobody teaches you you have to learn yourself the yeah. vaginoplasty is something that's taught yeah so that the other one is something that's taught yeah i'm looking over at john and he's about to faint are you okay john <laughs> he's, he's yeah. turning red he's on his phone uh, trying to read. He's, but tell him he's lucky because uh, when we put our website together well, I, I before and after pictures of, of, of basically vaginas and labia, you know, I didn't put the website together. So you have to do your web designers. And here's before and afters. And those guys kind of freaked out too. So. <laughs> TMI, TMI. Yeah. Wow. Well, tell us, uh, we have, John, can you... Um, yeah. Can you say uh, give us give the, our listeners Dr. Blatt's um, website? Sure. And you have it Twitter and Facebook, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I have his uh, website up on the screen as well, underneath his name. It's privaterx.com. Wonderful. And then we also have been flashing pictures of your products throughout Thank the show you. as well. So people have the uh, Facebook and the Twitter contacts as well. And I'll, I'll throw the pitch in the, the, uh, for the surgery. It's the Manhattan Center for Vaginal Surgery com. Right. So okay. if, if those are issues and you want to contact us, and we get patients from literally around the world as well. Awesome. Wonderful. And you're so you're located in Manhattan, yes? In Manhattan, yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Well, this has been really educational. Oh my gosh. I mean, I had no idea about a lot of it. Well, let me just leave us with this too. Menopause is not the end, but rather a time of new beginnings, a fresh start. A time in life when one can approach life from one's own unique perspective rather than having to approach life from set roles. And if there's anybody out there that's having difficulty in this area, please, please, I urge everybody to look up Dr. Blatt. Yeah. His products are amazing. They can and help you through a lot of, of problems if you have them. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, I, I like that you're, you know, that you're taking care of you know, the vagina aesthetically, too, because we don't think about it that way. And let's face it, everybody likes to look good, you know, mm -hmm. both inside and out. And also when you're not wearing clothes and some women can have, you know, like you said, Dr. Blatt, a lot of self-esteem issues. And they're mm -hmm. so lucky to have someone out there oh that they can gosh. come to and yeah. talk about it in a very kind of open way. Because you're right. A lot of women, even though they see maybe their gynecologist been with their doctor for many years, right. could still be embarrassed to talk about it. Do they call you Absolutely. the vagina whisperer? <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. Not yet, but if you want to start that. We're going to start a Seriously. movement. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Lordy. That's what we're going to do if it's okay with you, Dr. Blatt. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's going to love that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much. I mean, we really appreciate having you on. And, um, you know, teaching us about about this and that you've done something about it. I mean, I think that's that it takes people like you, innovative people like Absolutely. you to be the first ones to do something like that. And then other people follow. Yeah. 
Well, thank you for having me on. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for coming on. And, um, and say hi to your wife for us, and we're glad that she got herself a little bit of help so you guys can continue to enjoy what seems like a very happy marriage. Uh, yeah, we do. We get along great. That's wonderful. All right. Thank you so right. much. Take care. Nice meeting you guys. Have a wonderful guys. afternoon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. So, and why don't we, we urge everyone, all the listeners, to go to Dr. Blatt's website and check out the products. And you can actually, it seems like, buy it on your local. I think on the website it says where you can buy the products. Mm-hmm. And, um, and check it out. You know, oh, yeah. I think most people, if not, you know, most women and men too, mm-hmm. you know, shave or do waxing. And so the cooling pads and the soothing serum, I think, are really good oh, ideas. Very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So why don't we talk about our workshop? We have an yes. upcoming workshop, April 16th and 17th, mm-hmm. expanding your psychological and spiritual views. Yeah. And it's Kelly and I mm-hmm. getting together and talking about both our perspectives. Kelly's going to take you through some wonderful meditations, talk about our soul's purpose. And right? the other side, you know, what's our purpose here? Um, do we, I'll do some readings for people. That's going to be great. Yep. I mean, fun. I have seen Kelly do readings, and she comes in and works with my patients, as, as um, I'm sure you've heard me talk about before, and it is unbelievable. So if you don't believe, you will walk away believing. <laughs> it is truly, I mean, it's, it's a gift. It really well, is. You. Because thank it could be so heartbreaking, mm-hmm. you know, to lose someone. And then working with someone like you or just even hearing what you yeah. say, you know. Yeah, that you, the world goes on. The universe goes on. Yeah. You know, other dimensions. That we could There's still. the other side. Right. That we could still miss their physical, oh, yeah, you know, body. Of course. But knowing that they still, they're still mm-hmm. there. They still love us. They care about us deeply. And really, if you're thinking about them, they're right there. They're just a moment away. They're right there. Yeah, yeah. And I will be talking about attachment, how we attach to be really significant. our parents. Yeah, yeah, I'll be talking about more what happens in this lifetime and help you through, <laughs> right? Yes. And help you through some things if you're having some issues or some um, difficulties in different areas of your life or just not happy with different areas of life and how to change what you don't like. Yeah, so please join us. We uh, have Los Angeles, California. Yeah. And we're actually it's we're doing it in a hotel. So if you're coming in from out of town, you can we have a special rate so you can mm-hmm. spend the night there and um, make it as convenient for you as possible. You can go. It's called expanding self-awareness through psychological and spiritual growth. And you can go to eventbrite.com, mm-hmm. right, to buy the tickets from there. You can also see it on our website, mm-hmm. Both Sides Now TV. Correct? Yes. On it's Facebook. on the screen as well there with an special link that they Great. can just register. Wonderful. And we're actually working on our website. Yes, so we for those have that soon. for those who have asked about it, we are working on it. We're a little slow, you know, we're kind of old, so you know, be patient with us. <laughs> we're in menopause. <laughs> exactly. Be a little patient. But we are working on that. But you can go to our Facebook page and we have a Twitter page as well. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Great. So thank you for joining us and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye everybody. Thank you. You've been listening to Both Sides Now, featuring the unconventional duo Dr. Shirley and Kelly White. Two perspectives, one world.